Hello, my name is Rebecca Roy and I'm a forester with the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. I'm glad you want to learn about tree identification. Why is it important to know how to identify trees? You can diagnose any issues you have with your trees on your land. You can make management plans for the trees you have or the trees that you would like to have. And it will help you choose the right tree for the right place. Trees all have different needs and they do well in different places and grow to different sizes. Tree identification can help you choose the right tree for planting at your home. And knowing your trees is fun and learning how to identify them is fun too. And trees stand still so it's easier to identify them than some other things in nature. What can we use? Sometimes we can use leaves, flowers, and fruit. Those are not available all the time, but most of the time we can see the bark, the location of the tree, the shape of the tree, the size of the tree, and twigs are always present for us to take a close look at to help us with identification. We will use the Tree Finder booklets, a dichotomous key to identify our trees. A dichotomous key is a step-by-step, question-by-question method used to identify trees. It's much more precise than the alternative old flip through the field guide method, but you need to know some terminology in order to use your Tree Finder booklet. Here's a simple leaf. The leaf blade is a wide flat part of the leaf. This is where the tree makes its food. The entire leaf includes the petiole, which is the leaf stalk. That's that little stem that connects the leaf blade to the branch. The midrib of the leaf is that line that goes up the middle of the leaf, which is important to look at for tree identification. Stipules are little growths on either side of the leaf bud, and these are not present in all types of trees, so the presence or absence of them can be important for some tree identification. And there, right next to the petiole, right next to that leaf stem, is the bud, which is next year's leaf. Buds can really help with tree identification. And there's the stem, which is the branch of the leaf. Now here's an entire compound leaf. It, this is one leaf that's composed of leaflets, multiple leaflets. There's one leaflet. So this stem, this leaf has seven leaflets on it. And you can tell this is just one leaf because you can see the bud down right at the base of the petiole. The petioles are the little stems that connect the leaflets to the petiole. I guess there's more to remember with the compound leaf. And there's that bud that's right there at the bottom. That lets you know that it is a compound leaf. Let's look at some leaf types. This is a broad and flat simple leaf. It's characteristic of many deciduous tree species. Deciduous or broadleaf trees lose their leaves each fall. Needle trees, conifers, evergreens, these are trees with needles. They can be as sharp as pines and spruces or more blunt as in eastern hemlocks. Scale-like leaves are thin, flat, and closely oppressed to the branchlets, as in the northern white cedar shown here. No, this, is, this illustration shows several leaves together. All three leaf types together. On the left is a scale-like leaf, the middle is the broad and flat leaf, and the right are the tree needles. Leaf arrangement helps with identification too. Alternate leaf trees. The points of attachment of the petioles or the leaf stalks are staggered along the stem. This is an alternate arrangement. Opposite leaved. You'll see that two leaves are attached to the stem directly across from each other and you can see the buds are at the junction of the leaf and the twig. This is opposite. And then there are World leaves, this is when you see three or more leaves attached at the stem point along the stem. Let's compare them all. The top left is alternate, the top right is opposite, and the center bottom is world. Leaf structure is also important for tree identification. Here's an even pinnate leaf. It's a compound leaf with an even number of leaflets. Palmately compound leaves, Looks sort of like the palm of a hand where all the leaflets are attached at the center together. Odd pinnate, 
This is a compound leaf that has an odd number of leaves. And bipinnately compound is a fern-like compound leaf. Leaf margins, these are the edges or the margins of the leaves. They look different on different tree species. Serrate margins have sharp, forward directed teeth like a saw blade. Double serrate means that each sharp, forward directed tooth bears small teeth, so it's like a double saw blade. Dentate leaves are margins with sharp teeth that point directly outward. And lobe leaves are margins with relatively large rounded projections. You can help remember this by thinking about your ear lobes. Lobe leaves look like ear lobes. And then entire margin is a term that's used to describe a margin that does not have any teeth or any lobes. It's just smooth. Fruit types. Akenes are a simple dry fruit with a single seed. Um, which is like a sycamore. Double and single samaras are the wing seeds that you see from maple trees and ash. Nuts from here from hickory and acorn from an oak tree. Legume seeds are from a black locust tree. Capsule seeds, this is from poplar. Palm is an apple, droop is a fruit like a cherry, and the berry type of seed is from a persimmon. These are all terms that you will see in your tree finder booklet. Tree shapes can help determine species as well. This is a, an example of a pendulant tree, which is like a weeping willow shape, and then an ascending tree, like branches on a maple tree. You can use twigs for identification by looking at the buds. The arrangement, shape, and size of buds can determine the type of tree that you're identifying. Leaf scars, and this is where last year's leaves were attached to the twig. The shape, size, and the little bundle scars in them can help you identify the tree. Whether lenticels are present or not, and these are little spots on the bark of the twig. They're really pores that provide exchange of gases between the internal tissues and the atmosphere for the tree. And so the presence and or shape of them can help with tree identification. And then if you take a cross section of the twig, the pith or the center of the twig when you cut it open can help you identify what type of tree it is. And here's some pith types. A uniform pith is solid throughout. Chambered pith has chambers in it. A hollow pith is hollow. And then the excavated pith is a solid pith with holes in it. There are lots of different bud types. And here's an example of some of them that you can see and that will help you identify trees. Um, buds have different scales on them. There are these hard protection, little hard scales that help protect the buds on the tree. And they're sort of like fish scales, like touching them feels like touching fish scales. So that's what we're looking at is a bunch of different types of scales on the buds. Um, the narrowly conical bud type is often seen on beech trees. The ovoid type is on chestnut. Conical is from chestnut oak. Accessory is on scrub oak. Super exposed walnut. Willow has one scale. Striped maple is stalked. See, it has a little stalk on the bottom. Outermost scale centered directly over the leaf scar is in aspen. Scales in two ranks is present on elm species. Striate scales are on hawthorn beam. Rounded scales are present on white ash. And then the valvate type scale is on the tulip tree. And you can see the white ash is a really good example of, you can see the bud scar underneath the bud from the previous season. Okay, let's practice. Everybody grab your tree finder book. And let's look at our first species and see if we can identify it. Oh, there's your tree finder book.
So this dichotomous key is the most common type of key. It's pretty simple to use, although you need to know that terminology to use it. And you make one decision at a time. So if you make an error, you can go back and review the questions that you answer. So it's one question at a time, which makes it easy to go through and identify and is straightforward. All right. So let's just review some of the terms. The leaf blade, the entire leaf, the petiole is that little stem that connects the leaf blade to the twig, the bud right at the base of the petiole, and the stem of the tree. The leaflet on this compound leaf, the petiolu, and the arrangements that we looked at, alternate, opposite, and world. All right, here's our species. Okay, let's grab our tree, tree finder book. We're going to start on page five. And the first question is, if the tree has needles, it does not. If the tree has leaves, start with this symbol on page 14. So turn to page 14. If the leaf or buds grow opposite like this, and this is, this is an opposite tree, so you go below and it says if leaves are compound, you can see this isn't compound. The leaves are simple, not compound, so we need to turn to page 18. If each leaf has a single main vein with smaller side veins and without teeth or lobes, that's not it. It's a leaf with three to seven main veins radiating from one point and it is lobed, so we go below. If the notches between the lobes are V-shaped, either a broad or narrow V, they're V-shaped, so we go below. If the leaves are distinctly five-lobed, no, the leaves appear three-lobed rather than five-lobed. Those two basal lobes, which mean the lobes at the very bottom, are small. So we need to go to page 19. Page 19, if the leaf surface is rough with a network of depressed veins and the lobes are drawn out to long tapering tips and the tree is small and shrubby, that's not it. So if the leaf surface is smooth and the teeth is in irregular sizes and it is not a shrub, it is red maple. Yay, we identified it. The red maple has opposite branching, simple leaves with three to five shallow lobes and it's coarsely toothed, light green above, pale green to whitish beneath, turning brilliant red in the autumn. Red maples are famous for having some red on them year round. Found in a variety of habitats, typically they'll reach 50 feet high, sometimes as high as 100 feet, and it grows best in wet soil. The bark is smooth and gray when the, young, when the tree is young on young trunks and on the branches and older trunks it's darker and more shaggy and roughened with long irregular peeling flakes. Good job on the red maple. All right, what is this? This is our next tree. We're gonna start again on page five. If the tree has needles, nope, the tree has leaves, so we go to page 14. If the leaves or buds grow opposite, and this is an opposite branching tree, so we need to go below. The leaves are compound. No, this is a simple leaf. If the leaves are simple, not composed of leaflets, we need to go to page 18. And that's what we need to do. Okay. If each leaf has a single main vein with smaller side veins and is without teeth or lobes, if each leaf has three to seven main veins radiating from one point and is lobed, that's it. So we need to go below. If the notches between the lobes are V-shaped, they don't look V-shaped. The notches look U-shaped, so we need to go to page 20. 
page 20. If the leaf stem shows a milky juice when broken, leaf usually wider than long. No, that isn't it. Let's see below. If there is no milky juice, leaf is about as long as it is wide. The base of the leaf is curving. It is sugar maple. Good job. Sugar maples have opposite simple five lobed leaves. They're four inches wide approximately and bright green above and pale green below. And the leaves turn a bright, brilliant orange, yellow, or red in the autumn. Sugar, maker, sugar maple bark is gray-brown and smooth on young trunks of trees, and in older trunks, it's very fissured in long, irregular flakes. This is an important tree. As you know, it's the Vermont state tree and a source of maple sap for the maple syrup we all love, and it's found in most wooded slopes in Vermont. Okay, how about this one? What is this? Let's start again on page five. The tree does not have needles, it has leaves, so we need to go to page 14. If the leaves or buds grow opposite, and this is an opposite branching tree, so we need to go below. If the leaves are compound, composed of several leaflets. Yes, this is a compound leaf, so we need to go below. If the five or more leaflets radiate from one point. No, if the leaflets do not radiate from one point, or there are only three leaflets, go to page 16. If the leaflets are different shapes and sizes, that's not true. The leaflets are similar in size and shape. That's true, so we go below. If each leaflet has a short stem, which it's true, each leaflet does have a very short stem. You see that, so we need to go below. If the leaflets are regularly toothed and the twig is square, or with two long lines from leaf scars, that's not true. The leaflets are not regularly toothed or only toothed along the tip of the margin and the twig is round. That's true, I don't see teeth on there. We need to go to the next page. If the twigs and leaf stalks are hairy, it's not hairy, the twigs and leaf stalks are not hairy, so go below. The leaflets are whitish beneath, it is white ash. Yay, white ash, good job. The leaves on the white ash are opposite compound leaves about 10 inches long with five to nine leaflets, each three to five inches long and short stocked. They're silverly, silvery beneath and the margins are entire or a few have some rounded teeth towards the tip of the leaflets. And ash have a samara, a single winged seed. It looks like, it looks sort of like a canoe paddle blade. And in the fall, they'll hang in clusters on the tree and then typically fall off individually and helicopter down. The bark is cool. It's gray-brown and evenly furrowed in diamond-shaped areas separated by narrow interlacing ridged slightly scaly, and it's slightly scaly on the larger trees. It's The white ash is a really large tree and it grows on rich soils and it can grow to 80 feet high or more. The fall foliage is bright yellow to dark maroon, and it's a really valuable wood for baseball bats and furniture making. Thank you so much for practicing tree identification with me, and I hope you're planning to take your tree finder out into your woods and practice identifying your trees. Good luck and have fun out there.